We would be honored if you would join us. Hey, Star Wars fans, welcome back to another Vintage Collection action figure review. This one has been out for probably about a month or two now. It is VC311. It is Professor Hu Yang from the Ahsoka series. And of course, the Clone Wars. Can't forget about the Clone Wars. This droid has seen some stuff in his 25,000 years. I would too if I lived that long. But um, <laughs> 25,000 years, that's a long time. Um, yeah, really been looking forward to this figure. It's just one I've just just put off um, when I got some of the new wave of figures. This one just, just bypassed me for whatever reason. Whatever reason. No idea. Can't explain it. But he's here now. And that's the most important thing. Let's bust him open and have a look. Here is Professor Hu Yang. As always, we take a quick look at the packaging. We take a look at the accessories, paint applications, articulation, and then at the very end, we do a peg test, which is important. It's important. So yeah, accessory-wise, he does come with these two arm extensions for for his little backpack thing. We'll explain how they work in a moment, but there's the uh, the little two two separate arms. He does come with his little teeny tiny little data pad which is cool and then the training saber glow stick thing which is nice nice addition it's not necessary it's a uh, like the black series one a little bit awkward there's no place to hold it um you can sort of stuff it in his belt but that looks like it's gonna be too difficult um, yeah, the backpack here is obviously removable. There is a peg in the back, as you can see. And yeah, it comes with the sort of the folded up arms. And yeah, they are quite small, so I understand why why they gave us this option. So we can put these two these two parts in. And then reattach that to the back there. You can display them like so. I suppose you could do them the other way around as well. Not sure whether there's any sort of right or wrong right right or wrong way. Yeah, I think probably the, the way I had it before was probably a little bit more, more accurate, but I don't know. I'm just looking at the sort of the hinge there, so it looks like it wants to sort of fold in that way. So maybe I'm right. Maybe I've got it the right way now. Anyway, we're going to pop them back off and put the folded up arms back in. You don't need to take it off the back. But it sort of sits in there nicely. I'm going to keep him like this. And yeah, the, the, the sort of belt and his tool, tool patches, that's sort of a softer, softer plastic there, which sort of allows for that articulation to still still make make happen <laughs> just get a good close-up look at him now again the sort of the main sort of criticism people have had for this one and the black series one is the color um you know being a sort of a, almost a cream pearly color or he appears on screen to be a little bit more of a, a brushed brush steel i guess um i don't know it could it could be the lighting in the in the series that that looks that way. Um, I mean, I haven't seen any behind the scenes <laughs> details or anything to show otherwise. But you know, perhaps this was based off of uh, concept drawings that Hasbro were given early in the production process on the figure, on both the figures. Um, so he did sort of come in this sort of creamy colour. Be tempted to uh, give it a matte clear coat over it just to sort of see how that looks afterwards. To take a little bit of that shine out of his out of his body, but I'm probably not going to worry. Let's be honest; he's probably going to end up on the shelf, just hanging out with Hera and Ahsoka and Sabine. But otherwise, I think you know the the blue, that sort of bronze on his forehead there, as he's got that little swivel eye that can sort of come down so we can analyze even the sort of the bronzy gold details of his eyes there are really nicely done nice and clean paint apps on this guy and some other details there on his back he's sort of got the the wires at the torso there 
it's probably a little bit too fiddly to to expect any more sort of you know minute details in there for, for like wiring and stuff like that so I'll give that a pass that's fine you know it doesn't stand out I know they've sort of done it with 3PO's in the past where they have added a couple extra paint lines in there but yeah I'm not, not really feeling the need to worry about that coming down to these sort of plates different sort of color armor plates that sort of copper copper sort of gunmetal gray as well the sculpt's really nice but overall the paint applications are nice and clean overall the, the whole figure I can't really I can't spot any faults So articulation wise he does have that double barbell in the top of the neck doesn't appear to be any movement at the bottom of the neck just in the top there is obviously a hinge in the elbows you can swivel that around as well hinge in the elbows the swivel there there is a just swivels in the wrists I think yes just a swivel in the wrist Again, the hands are quite sort of small and fiddly. They're a little bit dainty, so not a lot you could pack in there. Uh, there is a torso joint there. There's also a swivel at the bottom of the waist. And it does have the ball and socket at the upper thighs. The swivel cut there for the for the thigh joint for that thigh swivel. And there is a hinge in the knee there. You can swivel that around that way. And then got the ankle joint and a little bit of a rocker there. And that's where we get to the pegs. So they're quite small. And I'm going to start off by using a standard sort of Hasbro stand. This one here. This is probably the most universal, um, universal one. And I think, you know, unless you heat this up a little bit, I think that's going to be a very tight fit. It's very tight. I think the depth is there. The peg hole appears to be deep enough. But what I'm going to bring in is a custom stand that we have at KessrunHair.com. Now these ones are made, made by us. Designed in-house, printed in-house. Three different peg size on it and this removable arch. We can aid some bigger figures by slotting the foot underneath. That just sort of simply pops out there after you get it. And you can lock that in. It just adds a little bit of extra, extra, extra. So we're going to try out this smaller peg. I think this one's going to fit the best. Um, the other two being a little bit better. Look, that one fits on there nicely, so that's not going anywhere. So I think this guy will be taking up residence on, on a KR stand, which I'm excited do have these on kesselrunhair.com in packs of 10 at the moment where we're only sticking in Australia so if you are an Australian looking for some for some different action figure stands these are the ones like I said three different options plus that extra support arch for those bigger figures just to uh, you know you can slot a black series one under there but yeah three different peg sizes we sort of Tested a lot of figures and found found some holes that suit most figures. That little one is probably the uh, the rarest one, but we've uh, we've come across a figure here that works with that little peg hole. Awesome! Really, really happy about that. So yeah, there's a link in the bio to take you to kissrunhair.com if you are in Australia. We'll look at international shipping at some stage. Um, it's not a it's not cheap to send from Australia to overseas so if you're willing to pay I think you can the website should give you option too but there is Hu Yang Professor Hu Yang really nice figure I'm, I'm glad I added this one to the collection love to hear your thoughts his accessory is going to go away in the accessory tub 
Let me know what you guys think. Appreciate you checking out the video. We'll see you again next time. Till then, may the force be with you always.